of my favorite games of all time is I am a fish. For the people who don't know what it is, it's basically a game where you are a fish and your goal is to follow a path without falling to the ground to reach the ocean or anything point where there is water. I hope you understand, but it's very complicated to explain what the game goal is, but whatever. It has very simple mechanics, but a very complex map structuring. And yeah, probably you are asking yourself why I'm saying that to you, because today I'm going to try to make a similar game. But instead of you are a fish, it probably sounds better, I don't know, maybe you are a carrot. And your goal is not to reach the ocean anymore, but is to go inside a mixer. That type of mixer you use to mix vegetables and fruits and yeah, this kind of stuff, you know. So it's basically a that's you game. Yeah, but this is the life of a carrot. So yeah, be eaten. So let's dive into Unity and start making the project. The first thing I have to do is create a new 3D project and rename it with the proper name. After the project has been loaded, the first thing to do as always is create a bean and then also a very fat square usually called ground. Give them some colors and it's time to code some gameplay mechanics. Like this magnificent player movement for this carrot. Look at that. Oh, no. No, 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 stop. Please, please stop. No. Scooby -Dooby -Doo. Where are you? Because Bean is dead for now, I replace it with a cube with the shape of a carrot. And I also update the movement script, so now we can throw it in anything direction we want. Cool. The next object that we need for this prototype part of our game is the mixer. So I made this temporary model in Unity and yeah, it, it's pretty bad. But don't worry, I'm going to make some models later on. To follow the carrot around the map, I add this follow camera with this Unity package Cinemachine. And to make the scene prettier, I install a package of skyboxes and I change the sky with this sunny variant. Because yeah, I like sun and it makes me go sus. But now let's talk more about gameplay mechanics. Our goal is to go into the mixer, right? But how we can go into it? How we can move? Basically, we can control our jump direction with WASD or arrow keys. And we can also control the power of the jump based on how long we hold down the space button. For now, we check the power of the jump with the console. But what if we want to see this on the screen? This is a simple question for a professional game developer like me. Simply create a slider and modify his value with the jumps power variable. So that is what it looks like. Easy. Now it's time to change these two pieces of shit with some real models. And when I said real, I said this. Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm pretty bad at 3D modeling, okay? But whatever. To make the game more polyed, I add this particle effect placed whenever we collide with the ground. And damn, that looks juicy. And you know what can be more good to add in our game? Yeah, coins. So I modeled a sort of coin, import it into Unity and give it an idle animation. And why not make a particle system placed whenever we collide with it? The last thing that I want to add before we start making some environment are some polishes for the mixer, like the blades rotate when we throw the carrot into it and two new particle system, one for the victory and one to simulate the sliced particles of the carrot. Nice. Now it comes my favorite part of game development and this is creating the environment. For the first level I was thinking to make a sort of vegetable garden map because yeah carrots don't spawn directly in your fridge but they grow underground in this moment i was creating a map with a sort of vegetable garden with some stuffs around it but i didn't like it so i decided to change the terrain and add some of my personal models made in blender and after an entire day of working on the first map and having some issues with wind what the f 
is that. I finally finished it and I added some very bloomy post processing. And now it's time for playtesting. Whoa, looks very pretty. And brightness. Yeah. After all the play testings, I had two new texts. One to count the moves done and the other one to count the collected coins. Then I made a simple UI canvas for the victory comes in the scene very smoothly. I also made a temporary main menu and because I want to make the game with more maps as levels, I make this menu with all their buttons and preview images. So you can have an idea on how it looks a map before playing it. Alright, first map done, so let's create the second. In Blender I created some models for the environment. In this case I was thinking to make a sort of living room with a kitchen, so I made a sofa, a chair, a fridge, a library, a table with a plant, a cooker and some other interiors. I pour them into Unity and I start making the map. And this is how it looks. This should be probably my favorite of all the four maps that we are going to make. And you know why I always say we? Because if you subscribe, all the things I do on this channel are also yours. So let's smash the subscribe button, gamer. And if you are enjoying the video, smash also the like button. Thanks. So we finished also the second map. And I don't know what do you think, but I'm so proud of this. Because all of the models are made by me. Well us. Now let's add this map in the maps menu and then we can proceed with the third map. But before we start working on the next map, we have to do some adjustments to the player controller. Because now we are limited to a linear parable with some statics variables. Like we can really decide how forward we want to go separately, separate, separate, separately on how up we wanna go. So I decide to add this arrow that shows you the direction that you are pointing. And if you hold down the space button to charge the power of the jump and release it, it applies a force to the carrot's rigid body on the forward axis of the arrow. I hope you understand. But basically, all you need to know is with this upgrade of the player movement, now we can be more precise on throwing our carrot in anything direction we want. So yeah. So after this little fix, now it's time to make the third map. And I don't know, but today I'm feeling cold. So why not make an icy glacial map with some water as an enemy? Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. So the first step as always is create some models for the environment. Import them into Unity, add the water plane that it will be our enemy, color them with some cool materials and place the icebergs, rocks and trees in the proper way. To make the map more difficult, I add this icy grounds with a zero friction physics material. So yeah, pay attention or you're gonna slide in the water. Finally, because we are in winter, I had the idea to make a fantastic snow particle system. And this is how the map looks at the end. Pretty cool, right? Right? Now that also the third map has been done, we can proceed to make the models for the fourth. This time I want to make this sort of medieval map with so many bricks and so many details that your PC gonna explode. No really, I'm just joking. Maybe. But I know that this map is going to be crazy. I add this little river around the castle and a wood bridge to cross it. And you know why 3 seconds ago I just said that this map is going to be crazy? Because of this. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Because I want to add a puzzle feature to this map, I add this lever that it activates a piece of wood and it makes it go up like an elevator. So you can reach the top of the wall and go on this tower. 
to reach the mixer. Finally, we made all the first four maps, but two things still missing. And that are the jumps power indicator design and the flying effect for the carrot, like the run in the anime. So for the power indicator, I redesigned the corner with some voluntary imperfections like it's worn out and then fitted with the slider in Unity. Now it looks way better. While for the anime run effect, I tried to use the particle system instead of a visual effect because my version of Unity doesn't support that. So after trying some methods, this is the best result. And yeah, it's still a shit, but whatever. Later on, I will try to figure out how to do that in the proper way. So gamers, this devlog ends here. Thank you all for watching the video up to this point and I hope you enjoyed it. If it is, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to more content on game development. And if you don't enjoy it, uh, smash the dislike. But uh, you can leave a comment under the comment section with a tip that can be useful for me to upgrade my devlogs so I can yeah, you know, upgrade my videos. Yeah, bye.